start with Swamthi Pat. This meeting is being recorded. I will I will mute everyone. So let us begin with Shanti Pat. Please sit in a comfortable meditative posture with your hands on your knees in Jnan or Jain Mudra, head, neck, shoulders, back, all in a straight line, eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, chest, upper back, abdomen, lower back, hips, arms, legs, the whole body. Put your awareness to your breath. Normal spontaneous breathing coupled with awareness. I am breathing in and I am breathing out. And I am aware I am breathing in. I am aware I am breathing out. Let this be the form of your awareness for some time. Maintaining this awareness, let us deepen our awareness and bring it to the eyebrow center. And over here, visualize the form of a brightly burning candle flame, Jyoti Swarupa. Keep our awareness connected to this image. And let us chant the mantra Om three times, followed by the Shanti mantras. Take a deep breath in. Oh. Oh. Sahana Vato Sahana Bhunakto Sahavir Yankarava Vahai Tejas Vinavadita Masto Ma Ved Vishavahai O Shanti 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 Harihi O Ariyom Tatsad. Gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from your palms to your eyes. Energizing your eyes. Energizing the brain. Energizing the whole body. And then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Ariyom Tatsad. Namo Narayan, Jai Ho. Namo Narayan, everyone. Thanks for joining in in the third edition of Satyam Yoga Conclave. And uh, as we all know, in the last two editions, we have seen the sequence. Of it's going to be the same. We will have four sessions. Today's session is going to be the introduction and setting the stage for the next coming three sessions and we will have expert speakers in the next three sessions and uh, this yoga conclave theme is going to be as we have as the name 
rightly suggests, conclave is the culmination of whatever has happened in the last month. And the theme of last month has been head, heart, and uh, hands, balancing the head, heart, and hands. So in alignment to that, uh, this yoga conclave is going to be about jnana yoga, bhakti yoga, and uh, third one? Karma yoga. Karma yoga. Uh, so we are going to do all the three sessions in, in the guidance of uh, Swamiji. And over to you, Swamiji, about uh, you know enlightening us about the next coming sessions and what we can expect and what is the expectation from us to take the most out of these uh, sessions. In this. Namunarain, thank you very much, and a very warm welcome to all the participants of this Satyam Yoga Conclave. And this is a very powerful moment. Some of you might be aware, some of you might not be. So therefore, for the benefit of those who have joined in just now, I would like to give you a short background. You see, today, yoga is a very popular subject. We all know about it. But few decades ago, that was not the situation. And today, what is happening is thanks to the relentless, tireless, focused efforts of so many before us. It is they who have brought this knowledge of yoga out to the masses. Yoga was and is an eternal science. And in this science, there are multiple dimensions. But that science had slowly started declining from the public memory. And there were lots of misconceptions. And one of the pioneers of the yoga movement has been Swami Satyananda Saraswati. And the scientific approach to yoga is widely credited to him. He brought in a very specific, systematic approach to yoga. And Swamiji spoke of yoga in the widest possible range. He did not limit yoga to only a few practices. In the same way as science encompasses a very wide range of subjects, it is not only mathematics or chemistry or biology or geology but it is an entire spectrum. And the basis of that spectrum is the in, in, inquisitiveness, the curiosity to try and find out why is this happening? What is happening? What is the reason behind it? How does it work? That is the basis of science. In the same way, yoga has a very, very wide range and Shri Swamiji, as we call him, spoke on the entire range of you and brought it out. Yoga has always been a science. Unfortunately or fortunately, the terminology was extremely intricate, abstract, and for today's human beings, Difficult to understand. It was almost like a different language. And therefore, what Swamiji did was, he brought out this old science, looked at the new science, current science as we call it. And then he matched the two. He translated the principles eternal principles 
in alignment with today's times. They did not change anything. They did not bring anything new because the knowledge is already there. What was necessary is to translate it so that it becomes relevant to today's times. It is relevant, but we didn't know about it. So that is what Sri Swamiji did. And mind you, that was not his calling. His calling was totally different. But his guru, Swami Shivananda Saraswati, gave him a mandate. Spread the message of yoga from door to door and shore to shore. And then, when Swamiji received this mandate, he thought about and said to his guru, Swami Shivananji, but Gurudev, I don't know yoga. As a sannyasi, the subject we have, our subject is Vedanta. You are asking me to speak about yoga. Swami Shivananji smiled and said, don't worry. Sikhana shuru karo, sikhate sikhate sab jai. So go ahead and start teaching. And as you teach, everything will unfold. And then Swami Shivananji took him to his Kutiya and by Shaktipat transmitted everything what Swami Shivananji had to Swami Satyananda. Like in today's times, we clone a hard drive. Once you clone a hard drive, it is same as the original. There's no difference. Same thing, transference took place. Then Swami Satyananda traveled the length and breadth of the country. Subcontinent, not only country. Because he said that if my guru has asked me to teach yoga, there has to be a reason why he has asked me to teach yoga. Let me first find out what the reason is. And he has said, door to door and shore to shore. So it is not that I have to live the practice of yoga. No, I have to reach it out to people. Why? And so when he entered with the masses, he came to the conclusion that there is one basic there are lots of problems in the world, but the problem has a single root. The mind of people is untrained, it is fickle, and it is this untrained mind which creates problems. And then Swamiji said, yes, this is the reason because there is no better way to handle the mind than through yoga. This is the reason why my guru has told me to teach yoga. So now, if this is the reason why, then orienting the practices of yoga so that people in today's times can understand it. Swamiji spoke of the different practices, classical practices, but he made it congruent and easy, conducive for the modern man in a language and a terminology which we can understand. Swamiji has spoken on so many different topics that it is difficult to, you know, speak about all. And that is the reason why in this year of the centenary of the birth of Swami Satyananda, we decided that every month, the fourth weekend should be dedicated to the study of yoga, to really understand what yoga is. Early in the 60s, Swami Satyananda had declared, yoga will become a powerful world culture and will change the course of world events. That is the prophecy he made. 50 years ago, 55 years ago, when he would have said this, in the interior of India, in Bihar, people would have thought, oh, perhaps he is just fantasizing. But today, we can see it was not a fantasy, it was a prophecy. And that prophecy has not yet completed. Yoga has become popular. 
but has not yet become a world culture and it has yet to become something which can change the course of world events today we are standing at crossroads civilizational crossroads and we as humanity have to take a choice which road we will take and the choice we make collectively today is going to affect us for generations in the same way as in the beginning of the industrial revolution the thought process which came up directed the movement for the next 3 400 years we are at a similar crossroad and it is incumbent on every yoga practitioner to become a beacon of hope to all but then what is yoga what do we understand by yoga this is the moot topic of all the satyam yoga conclave editions in the first edition we tried to understand how yoga can enrich our lives in the next we looked at the three major schools of yoga where we practice yoga so to say hatha yoga raja yoga kriya yoga and in this edition we are going to go the next step you see yoga is very good but yoga is not only to be practiced on the yoga mat no yoga has to be lived yoga are principles of successful living what are these principles how can we incorporate that in our lives how can we change our lives with that if we analyze any person's life we will see that this person has only one ultimate aim in life anybody you me cats dogs humans geniuses stupid people rich people poor people educated uneducated everybody ultimately we want to be happy we earn money because we want happiness we work hard because we want happiness happiness can come in different forms but happiness is not external happiness is internal if i am required to give away my food and feed somebody else i will never allow it but when the same i become a mother then even without thinking without a second thought i will first feed my child i might go a bit hungry i might not eat the best thing even if it my favorite my thoughts will go to my child go let my child have it how is it why are we doing it we are doing it because it gives us satisfaction and joy within the same laddu mithai peda pizza burger whatever used to give me joy by eating it now i am getting greater joy by feeding my child why why am i sacrificing because it gives me joy no where can you see that the spirit of receiving joy is missed even in animals even in plants everyone without exception wants happiness what exactly is happiness how can we achieve happiness how can we have satisfaction what is the method by which we can achieve that method is yoga and swami shivananda once mentioned that yoga is the harmony between the head the heart and the hands balancing these three aspects of our personality is yoga and that has been the theme of this month the head means the intellect the heart the emotions the hands the actions manasa vacha karmana 
if we have a beautiful orchestra you have a harmonium you have a stringed instrument you have a percussion you have multiple instruments it is extremely essential that all the instruments play in the appropriate scale they play at the correct time even if there is a one note which is off sync it's a discordant note and if this discordance increases then soon it becomes cacophony music is beautiful it gives great joy and pleasure but when the same music starts the components are the same mind you harmonium is playing guitar is playing violin is playing the bass is playing everything is there only difference is that they are no longer in sync they are no longer coordinated then the same music becomes cacophony i can't stand it and when it comes into harmony then automatically a smile lights up my face how is it that the components are the same but the way you adjust it everything changes this is yoga and this we can do 24/7 this is the secret of living yoga how do you live yoga what does living yoga mean we have these three different aspects of human personality the head intellect we think a lot we analyze a lot we portray we prognosticate we go and retrospectively think we do lot of thinking and based on that we come to conclusions and then we try and work with them but that's not the only aspect of human life there are others i intellectually know that i shouldn't do this take up a vice any vice for chitra what vice do you think we should uh, speak of uh, in the conclave swami ji no ju just now as an example smoking smoking okay hmm i know smoking is harmful for me <clears throat> i have read and i have seen i have heard people talk i have even seen people with uh, who have been smoking they get cancer and they get totally disfigured yet my mind goes to that cigarette the moment i see that cigarette i forget everything just i know i know it is wrong and exactly this is what the problem is many many years ago there was a crown prince called duryodhana and there was a person called krishna and once there was a dialogue between the two they were cousins and krishna asked duryodhana my dear you are such an intelligent fellow you are so brave why do you do these harsh things because they were you know in a relaxed state <clears throat> the guard was down they were chatting and duryodhan gave a beautiful answer he says janami dharmam i know this is what is supposed to be done nachame pravrutti my mind doesn't go there janamya dharmam i know it is inappropriate nachame nivrutti but my mind doesn't move away from there i do there is something inside me which forces me to go here and there how can we change this mind this mind forces us and how can we change this that is you the best 
text on yoga. There are many texts, but the best text on yoga, especially in today's times, for living yoga, if we can say, is the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. People might say that the Bhagavad Gita is a dharmic, a religious text. Swamiji said, no. Swamiji said, the Bhagavad Gita is the blueprint of life. If you have to construct a building, the engineer, the architect, they give you a blueprint. Based on the blueprint, the contractor will bring up the building exactly to same specifications. And if the contractor, while doing it, makes some modifications, there are problems. And then later on, if we need to see what has to be done, if we need to take corrective measures, then what do we do? Suppose the contractor has made some mistakes and a consultant is brought in. What will the consultant do? The first thing he will say, please show me the blueprints. He will go through the blueprints. He will look at the structure and then he will say, According to the blueprint, you have to do A, B, C, D, E. But you have done X, Y, Z. That is the error. So, the Bhagavad Gita is the blueprint of successful living. And that is the text, best text on yoga. And I don't say this, and it is not what even Swamiji has just said. It is mentioned right there in every chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Iti Srimad Bhagavad Gita Su Upanishad Su Brahma Vidyayam Yoga Shastri Sri Krishna Arjuna Samavade. So, Iti Srimad Bhagavad Gita Yam. In this text of Bhagavad Gita, Iti Srimad Bhagavad Gita Yam. So, Upanishad Su, which is an Upanishad, which is a text on Brahma Vidya. But most importantly, it is speaking of the Yoga Shastra and there are 18 aspects of this Yoga Shastra. And here, there is only one theme from the beginning to the end. Harmonizing the head, the heart, the hands. Intellectually, I know like this addict, but my heart doesn't allow. Intellectually, I know my heart also agrees, but while doing, my actions are totally different. There is this discrepancy between the head, the heart, the hand. And when there is this discrepancy, there is a problem. There is the example of the chariot, the charioter and the passenger. Today, we can say you have the car, you have the driver and you have the owner. If the wheels, let us not take all the complicated gadgetries like we have today, but we just say there are four wheels. And if the alignment of these wheels is not correct, what will happen? The car will overheat and there will be an accident. If the wheels are aligned, but the driver is drunk, what will happen? There will be an accident. If the wheels are aligned, the driver is also alert and expert, but the master is sleeping, again there will be a problem because the master has said, the owner has said, go in this way. And after that, he is not, not giving any instructions. So, the communication is broken. Then there is a problem. How can we remove that? That is what we will be looking at in these three sessions. And how does this begin? It begins not in a nice, beautiful happy environment, like you and I, we are all sitting nicely thinking of yoga, thinking of this. No, no, no. It doesn't begin there. It begins 
the Bhagavad Gita begins with crisis. Nervous breakdown, panic attack. We have so many names. Arjun, who spent his entire life getting weapons so that he can destroy the Kaurava forces. At the junction, the crucial moment when he had to make that move, he started cracking. He's giving all sorts of lame excuses. Oh, there will be bloodshed. Oh, he's my uncle. He's my brother. He's my this and that. Oh, social outcome is going to be a problem. Hello? All your life, you are working towards a goal. And now when the moment has come to actually implement that goal, you are developing cold feet. Is it because you are unsure of your strength? That can't be so. Because so many times previously we have seen Arjun single-handedly had destroyed all the forces. So therefore physical strength was not a problem. Abilities was not a problem. What was the problem? Anybody? Uh, function. The Kriya. The mind. The mind. Yes. The emotion. Moha. Yeah. So, you see, the hardware was okay. The software had a virus in it. This is where yoga begins. And then Bhagwan gives him very clear instructions. Those instructions help him realize that, oh, this is the reality. Oh, this is the reality. He had multiple Eureka moments. And then he realized, oh, this is how it is. And in the end, he says, Nashto moham smrutir Oh, all my confusions are clear. Now I understand and I will do as you see. That is what is essential in our life. We need to work in that direction. That is what is the role of yoga in our life. Living yoga. And for, to live yoga, there are three aspects. Karma yoga, Jnana yoga and Bhakti yoga. Karma yoga is not the yoga of action. Jnana yoga is not the yoga of the intellect. Bhakti yoga is not the yoga of emotion. No, that is limiting them. Yeah, to understand them, we can term it that way, but we have to realize karma yoga is much more than just physical actions. Physical actions, everybody does. Everybody in that war was fighting. But there was only one Arjun who had realized the principles of Karma Yoga. We have to understand that principle, the underlying principle. What are the secrets? What are the basis of Karma Yoga? And how can we practice that? How? Can that make a change in us? Please remember, it is karma yoga, not just karma. So, mindless activity is not what is expected. But to have a complete awareness. When I am doing something, what is going on in my mind? What are my motivations? How is my action? That is essential. Oh, yes. I just remembered one nice example. Many years ago, when, uh, you know, this was an example with Swamiji. He, uh, it, it was, uh, it, had, it had rained in the morning and the puja area was full of uh, 
water. So all of us were out take with the wipers, taking the water out. And Swamiji generally, all, almost all the time, he used to stay in isolation in his, in seclusion, in his sadhana. But that day, Swamiji just came out. He stood there at the edge, observed people, smiled, and he was just walking across. And then he just took the wiper from one person's hand and he started wiping. He did it for five minutes and then stood and said, all of you are doing karma yoga, right? So we all said, yes, Swamiji. And he said, karma yoga is not just working, even the labors work. When you do an action in four dimensions, whatever you do, it has to be perfect. It has to be accurate. It has to be correct. And it has to be quick. When you do it in these four dimensions, then that is karma yoga. He has not brought any philosophy into it. Just these four things. Whatever I do, I have to do it perfectly. I can't just do, okay, I'm just doing something so indifferently, I'm doing it a little bit here. No. If I'm doing something, I do it perfectly. I have to do it correctly. What is the correct way to do a thing? What is correct and what is incorrect? I have to observe, I have to understand, I have to evaluate and maintaining that evaluation, I have to continue doing it. It has to be accurate. My actions in the nitty-gritty also need to be accurate. If I have to stitch a shirt, I need to have the exact accurate measurements. If the measurements are not accurate and I don't stitch it accurately, it is not going to fit me. It's going to be a problem. So, it has to be accurate and it has to be quick. I have to suppose I have to sweep the courtyard and I say, oh, I have to do it perfectly. I have to do it accurately. I have to do it correctly. So I'm going to observe very slowly, very slowly, very neatly, very perfectly. I'm doing that. That is not karma yoga, mind you. Why have I been given the task, I have been given the task of sweeping the courtyard because somebody is coming and I need to complete that task before the person comes in. So it has to be in a time bound manner, correct, true, perfect, true, accurate, true, but also quick. And it is not mindlessly quick. It has to be appropriately quick. If something takes five minutes, I will give it five minutes. But if there is something else which is supposed to take 20 minutes, I will give it 20 minutes. Because if I don't give it 20 minutes, it is not going to be perfect or accurate. So you need to balance these four dimensions. And then all the philosophies come in automatically. You don't need to worry too much about the philosophy at that point. We just use these four aspects and everything comes in. That is Karma Yoga. And today, in the first session, we are going to understand more about Karma Yoga. And I would be very happy because I, from I, what I see, most of you, if not all of you, are practitioners of yoga. So, I would be very happy if you have questions. Because when there is an interaction, that means it is a dialogue between two. It should not be a monologue. So please come up and ask as many questions. We are very, very fortunate and lucky to have extremely experienced speakers who are masters in their subject. So bring up the thoughts Think, understand, question. Let there be 
lot of interaction. And when there is lot of interaction, there is churning in the mind. And only when churning takes place does the butter come up. You keep curds over there, you put water in it and you say, oh butter, please come up, I want ghee. No, it's not going to work that way. It needs to be churned. And when the churning takes place, then the butter comes up. There has to be this churning within. There doesn't have to be turbulence. There has to be churning. And when the churning happens in a specific manner, the, ghee comes up, the butter comes up. That is what we need to do. And then we will speak about Jnana Yoga. Yes, Daniel. Uh, you are muted. Can you unmute yourself? I have, I have some thoughts. If you're, if you're ready. Um, so, um, in um, verse forty-five of chapter two, uh, be without the three gunas, possessed of the self. Um, in, uh, I have a background from TM and Maharishi Mahesh Yogi did a commentary and basically he views that as the key to the whole Gita, that once one is possessed of the self and out of the three gunas, one essentially has reached that singularity where I guess one is one with Brahman. And when that happens, then according to him, every and according to the Gita, everything just works out right after that. So everything gets unified, the head, the heart and the hands all get you and then spontaneously everything just works out so then you don't have to worry about these four dimensions it just happens yeah but you see we are today not at that level where it happens if i can give you the example of driving a car when i'm learn uh, you know i'm starting off and i'm trying to learn to drive a car oh my god you have the clutch, you have the brake, you have the accelerator, you have the steering wheel, you have to look here, you have the rear view mirror, you have all those rules to keep in mind. And I'm extremely tense and we have to make a lot of effort. But over a period of time, it becomes so simple for us. The activities are the same. There is no change. You have still have the clutch, you have the brake, you have the accelerator, you have the steering wheel, you have the rear view mirror, you have the uh, front view, you have the rules, everything is there, nothing has changed. But we have changed and we have internalized all of that. So now I am driving the car, I am listening to the music, I am talking to somebody, I am observing the scenery, I am doing multiple things and the car still moves very smoothly. Why? Because we have worked on ourselves, internalized that knowledge and harmonized it. So uh, when you are speaking of that level, when the harmony between the head, heart and hands come through, very true, there are the three gunas and in, in the Gita it is mentioned, Pashyan, Shurunvan, Sprushan, Jigran, Ashnan, Gachan, Sopanshwasan. I don't do, I don't think, I, it happens through me, I become a medium. But for that to happen, we need to put in a lot of effort. We are at that place where we are still away from that clarity. Singularity for us is a theoretical concept that needs to be a reality in our life. And that is where all the practices of yoga come. So, uh, so I had one thought about what you just said. Um, to approach it from the four dimensions as the starting point, the question is whether you can reach the goal, which is unity starting with working on the four dimensions, will, will that get you to the ultimate result? Or does one need to try to practice getting to the ultimate result through, say, meditation in order to then have everything flow? If that makes sense. Uh, I, I think I understand what you're saying. Uh, it is not sufficient to only practice it is not sufficient only to do uh, and try and live yoga in the beginning for us who are novices, who are still learning. We need to have multiple 
aspects a little bit of practice a little bit of living yoga a little bit of action a little bit of bhakti all these because each of them will work on a different aspect of our personality in the end it's going each and everything is going to lead to the ultimate and there is going to be no difference there but uh, it will one will come from one aspect another will come from another aspect in the same way as we have a group of friends and i have some issue when i have one type of issue i will speak to one of my friends but if i have for example uh, i have got i am in need of money i will speak to one of my friends hello can you just you know lend me something if uh, i am feeling emotionally drained i might speak to somebody else i will not speak to the same friend so you know there are different aspects in our personality and according to our requirements we approach different people in this example of our friends in the same way different practices of yoga are meant to work on different aspects of our personality and when we bring all those uh, uh, different aspects together then there is something which works and the change starts happening from within and you know they start complementing each other and the total result is something which is exponentially better then what would happen if we were practicing only one uh, okay i i could go along with that and uh, we we will be discussing more of that uh, in the coming sessions also so that was about karma yoga one very important aspect of karma yoga is karma kshaya the theory of karma and i hope we will be discussing about that in the topic of karma yoga without karma kshaya nothing can happen that is something which is very essential for us to understand when we start working with this then knowledge starts coming up within that is the aspect of gnana yoga gnana yoga does not mean the intellectual yoga or intellectualized yoga or intellectual knowledge no it is the experiential knowledge which unfolds within and knowing that things suddenly change the aspect of that internal knowledge to come out is there was a beautiful example in a village there was a tiger who used to stay outside the village in the jungle and it the tigress gave birth to pups one of the pup rolled out and you know when it, it was barely uh, a day old you know this they have not opened their eyes as yet and it rolled down and came into the flock of sheep and when the tiger pup opened the eyes it saw sheep around and it tried to live like sheep walking like the sheep doing eating like the sheep doing everything and uh, over a period of time the sheep also accepted him as one of theirs one day from across the mountain the tiger came and when the tiger came the tiger roared all the sheep ran away that was their instinct nobody had taught them they didn't go to school that when a tiger roars we should run away no nobody taught them that is in born but this pup he did not run away he just stood there and listened oh what's that and the tiger roared again and the little pup roared back 
that is jnan yoga the dawning of that knowledge it's an experience which took place it was not an intellectual information that look my skin is this way look his skin is this way so therefore i am the jivatma that is the paramatma and no 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 it is not intellectual information it is the dawn of knowledge within that experience is jnan yoga and we will be discussing lot about jnan yoga but we will not be just speaking about intellectual yoga i would like to make this differentiation very clear that is very important yes daniel do you, um i'm wondering if you need to make the distinction between the result of a particular yoga such as jnana uh, yoga and the practice which gets you to that result that we will be speaking about all of that uh, in each of the sessions here just giving you an introduction giving you uh, you know uh, a sort of a trailer or a primer so that we start understanding we know what we can expect from that and yes uh, there is a philosophy there is a theory there are the practices all of that will be spoken about in uh, the sessions on karma yoga bhakti yoga. you know each of them they will speak about and and then one other thing can you give a unified definition of what yoga is yes yoga is the i mean if we're looking at perspective you want to swami shivanand ji the way he has defined it i find it the most relevant definition yoga is the harmony between the head the heart and the hands now how do you do it what are the uh, individual practices to do it that is a different story those are the practices but the end result what is needed is this swami satyanand ji in one point said yoga is mind management and self management speaking on the same swami niranjananand ji said that yoga is allowing the creativity within us to come forth they are the same but they are being spoken of in different aspects when you have the head the heart the hand which is in harmony all the others start happening and everything takes place from an ordinary human being you become an extraordinary genius and then you are able to transcend the mind and what is spoken of in the classical mat matters that yoga means union between the individual and the cosmic but how do we do that it is done through this so therefore to my mind the best definition in today's times for yoga is harmony between the head the heart and the hands because through that definition you are able to understand all the other aspects very easily without any uh, difficulty and it also gives you an indication of how we can approach them each person will approach them separately but that is what we will be able to understand is it karma kshay or karma shay okay there are two different things you see uh, kshaya means going away reducing declining and shaya it comes this is from the uh, sanskrit word karma shay and karma kshay kshay means reducing so we have a reservoir of karmas where let us say that we have multiple seeds we are walking through a field and we pick up one seed another seed third seed fourth seed and we collect all the seeds in a bag this bag of seeds is the karma shay where the reservoir of all the seeds are and depending on the each individual seed the seed will germinate flower and uh, manifest at different times in different manners that 
base reservoir from which all these come up is karma shay and karma kshaya kshaya means getting rid of that you have all these seeds but i don't want these seeds so what do i do i already am you know i am uh, having this baggage as we call it nowadays so how do we get rid of this baggage without if if i just take these uh, seeds and put it on somebody then it's going to be that person's baggage it's a different story that we can't do it on the basis of karma but how can we get rid of that that is karma kshaya i hope that uh, clears the question on karma kshaya and karma kshaya thank you sir yes and then the third is bhakti oh bhakti is such a topic that bhakti itself it is the beginning it is the middle and it is the end and all the yogas everything finally culminates into bhakti and that bhakti is the connection with the lord and the way i i i really loved it is how swami ji had once spoken about bhakti he said about the sufi saints they term bhakti and they say bhakti is ishq ishq means love but bhakti is ishq hakiki and what we say is ishq majazi what does that mean when the emotions when the bhakti when all of that is connected to the sense objects and the world outside the mundane world then that is ishq majazi and then we fall in love and when the same is redirected towards that principle which is hakikat hakikat means the essence the reality the only truth the one who is the only truth that is hakiki so when you go towards that that is bhakti and when you come out then it is vishaya bhog so bhakti is spontaneous transcendence of entire personality and connecting to that divine source that is bhakti and bhakti is very simple i don't need to be a great yogi sometime ago we were speaking about in the chaitra navratri recently we were speaking about one lady whose name was shabari she was a tribal and her guru told my dear shri ram the incarnation of supreme reality he will come and give you darshan and she had great faith in him and she said okay but then a question came in her mind kaise chhu main prabhu ki charaniya re oh how can i touch the feet of my lord main to jataki bhilaniya i am a bhilani a tribal i'm from a lower section nahi kelu yoga jap i have not done yoga i have not done jap and anushthan nahi kelu tirath snan i have not gone to any tirtha kshetras i have not taken dip in the holy rivers i have not done anything so how can i have the darshan of the lord that was her question and in that question he kept thinking of the lord this tells us there is no prerequisite for bhakti the only requisite is 
that we need to feel connected to the Lord. And Swamiji used to say, Bhagwan ke saath apna nata khojo. You discover what is your relation with God. Is God your father? Is God your mother? Is God your brother? Is God your friend? For some, even God is an enemy like Ravan and Kamsa. That was Vair Bhav Bhakti. It's obviously not possible for anybody. You need to have guts to stand in opposition with the Lord. We can't have that. So let's not think of that aspect. But that is also one aspect. In the story of Kamsa also and in the story of Ravana also, it is mentioned that wherever he would look, he would only think of Krishna and Krishna and Krishna. Oh, Krishna is coming. Oh, Ra Rama is coming. All what he could think was only that. Is That is not Bhakti. What is Bhakti? 24-7, I am thinking only of that. How can we do that? It is not just Swami Satya Sanghananji, the Pithadishwari of Rikhya Pit, very beautifully explained. He said, Bhakti is not taking the thali and ringing the bell and doing arti. Bhakti is not crying before the Lord. Oh God, this is happening. No. Bhakti is a wave in the brain. When there is a specific wave, then you are attached to the world. But when the wave modifies, then that attachment moves away from the external and gets transmuted inside, transcends everything and that becomes reality. That is bhakti. That is what we will be working with. And just a hint, bhakti is not just sitting down and closing your eyes and praying. No. We have many scholars in Sanskrit over here, they will agree with me. The root of bhakti is bhaja sevayam. It is not bhaja pujayam. What does bhaja sevayam? Seva means you need to connect by offering ourselves. That is very essential. Don't think that bhakti means I will sit down and I will just say, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord, Oh my Lord. No, that is not bhakti. Bhakti is that where you see there is this story and I believe it is of Eknath Maharaj. You say in Vedanta that Everything is one. All are manifestations of the same ultimate reality. And that is what Eknath Maharaj used to say too. And then one day, people saw he was sitting immersed in the Swarupa of the Lord. And suddenly, a dog came in. And he was about to eat. So there was a roti. There was a roti in front of him. The dog came in, picked up the roti and started running away. Eknath Maharaj suddenly became, he, you know, he saw what is happening and he ran behind the dog. Now somebody was observing and he said, look, he's uh, telling everybody uh, that there is unity, this, that, the other. It's all just humbug. No. He, when actually it comes to him, a dog uh, takes away his roti. He is running behind the dog to snatch that roti away. But there was another person who was more observant, who was ne sitting next to him. He said, no, my dear, please observe carefully. He is running behind, no doubt. But he is not running to take this. He is not running behind to take the roti away. He has a cup of ghee in his hands. He has the spoon over there and he is running. And he is saying, Oh Lord, please wait. Let me put ghee on that roti. How will you eat the roti dry? That's not an intellectual concept. That is the experience. And when that experience comes through, 
मैजिक हैपेंस दिस एक्सपीरियंस भगवान बुद्ध आल्सो यूज टू हैव एंड ही हैड द एक्सपीरियंस थ्रू द एस्पेक्ट ऑफ पीस देयर इज अ स्टोरी दैट देयर वाज अ मैड वाइल्ड एलिफेंट हु हैड गॉन वाइल्ड एंड ही वाज रशिंग थ्रू and he was destroying anything and everything in the path everybody was running helter skelter bhagwan buddha was sitting meditating the elephant was coming there so people tried to tell bhagwan please move please move let's go to safety he was in meditation he didn't even pay any attention the elephant started coming close and he was in fury but as he started coming closer and closer the elephant started quieting down and as he came very close to bhagwan he just sat down quietly and as if he was a small tame cat just sat down over there how did that happen the duality between i and you was lost i and you are one tell me is that bhakti is that gnana what is it it's in the end it's all the same everything culminates into the same experience the paths are different yes but culmination is the same and it is this that we have to understand it is this that we have to experience it is this that we have to take with us when we are able to do that then there is a definitive change in our life i have said this earlier also and i would like to repeat it i call this year the centenary year as the year of the breakthrough we have lots of problems in our lives i don't have a job i don't have good promotion i don't have so many things don't 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 so many don'ts i have tried everything in my ability but i am not able to achieve that i have got stuck in my life and i need a breakthrough in my life this is the year of the breakthrough that we can achieve that breakthrough and make a definitive change in our life yoga is the way how to do it how to make that change that is very essential and that is why we are having multiple aspects practical aspects theoretical aspects discussions everything and this is not just meant for speaking and feeling oh it's nice but it is meant so that we can take one little bit put it in our lives and start making a change qualitative as well as quantitative change in our life and it is my conviction that as long as we are sincere honest and we stick to the path even if we start with a very very small thing be assured there will be a change in our lives that is the glory of yoga that is the glory of the path of self improvement and it is this path of self improvement that we will be discussing and today evening tomorrow morning and tomorrow evening india time of course we will be speaking about karma yoga how we can use the principles of karma yoga my mind is too rajasic oh i want this i want that i want that it's too fickle and it's jumping from point to point use karma yoga and then a moment comes when there is peace there is some thing which comes up use dhyana yoga and then the emotions start coming up and they start going towards something beyond i me myself how can we use these and integrate them in our life and make a change is what we will discuss in these three 
sessions coming so that is a short introduction and a primer for the next three sessions and bring out all the questions uh chitra could you also explain how the uh, structure of the next three sessions will be you know the talks etc so that people can have a uh, better explanation i think somebody has asked a question yes manjeri you have raised your hand do you want to ask something uh, yes sir hari on uh, i wanted to ask what the actual difference in between swadharma and swakarma uh, with respect to um, bhagavad gita i am mean, not able to understand it properly swadharma and swakarma so uh, chitra can you uh, make a note of this question because uh, we are already uh, you know at 5 uh, 10 minutes beyond so uh, i won't be able to answer it in a nutshell and do justice to it but we will take this up in uh, one of the sessions today evening and uh, we can uh, that's a beautiful question and we will uh, work on that so chitra could you just explain how the structure yeah yes ma'am so uh, today you you all would have seen the flyer that has been uh, circulated we have three speakers eminent speakers uh, who will be talking to us about uh, all the three aspects that swam ji has explained just now uh, you know uh, in the evening we have uh, one session on karma yoga by dr sriram agashe and uh, in the, tomorrow we have uh, another session i will just read out from the flyer so that i will not make any mistakes uh, in pronouncing the names and making the times uh, just give me a minute So we have Dr. Sri Ram Agaste uh, talking about Karma Yoga in the evening today at seven thirty p.m. As we all know, in all the conclave sessions, every session is made into three parts. One part is uh, the speaker speaking about the topic that is for thirty minutes, roughly, and uh, the next part is Swamiji connecting the topic with uh, the teachings of Swami Satyanand Ji because we are in we are doing the whole thing. Uh, as a satyam smiran yoga uh, so we will be connecting it to the teachings of uh, swami satyanand ji uh, by uh, swami ji he will he will take us through that uh, uh, path and in the last 30 minutes it will be a panel discussion uh, wherein uh, everybody can ask their questions and there will be a discussion between the speaker and swami ji and uh, there will be some discussions Uh, with whoever is interested to take it out in a uh, in a broader perspective as much as the time uh, allows us to do so uh, to, this is the evening session the evening that is at 7:30 indian time and tomorrow morning we have dr lalita ram joshi will speak on dhyan yoga uh, and again the concept yeah, will yeah, be the same dhyan yoga yeah, yeah. Uh, okay uh, yeah nyan yoga dr lanka nam nam joshi uh, we will introduce all the speakers as the session starts because uh, you know it will be in the interest of time and also we don't want to repeat it uh, time and again uh, they are all eminent speakers as you can see in the flyer that is shared from uh, uh, shared to you about uh, satyam yoga kumbhe so we have that in the you know on sunday morning session and the the flow will be the same uh we will have uh, dr lalita speaking in the beginning in the first half an hour about uh, the topic and then swami ji uh, linking it up to the teachings of swami satyanand ji and then the last half an hour is for the discussion and uh, as in the beginning i asked swami ji what is the expectation from the participants in the sessions swami ji has explained it during his talk just now that his uh, our expectation is that we participate uh freely with all our questions we bring in our experiences and our questions and make it a very uh, heartfelt discussion for everyone that is only uh, one aspect that is only one aspect of what is expected from you the other aspect is that you once you see what is there uh on the menu pick up one of the items and ingest it internalize it imbibe it so that there is a change in your life that is the real 
take away and real expectation from all sure so we will uh, we will definitely try to do that and probably a feedback would also help us right uh, uh, you know in the in the coming sessions uh, we can in the in, you know we will make something uh, some process where we will ask people what they have done in the last month in the next uh, conclaves probably we can have a component to that effect also uh, yeah and uh, the concluding session of the satyam yoga conclave would be on sunday evening 7:30 uh, ist uh, with uh, it is our, it is on bhakti yoga with uh, bhakti parayan hari bhakti parayan eknath maharaj party uh, he will speak on bhakti yoga and uh, the it will be followed by swamiji's uh, comments and later we can have a panel discussion so this is going to be the next a uh, few sessions for us the next two days uh, will be a lot of knowledge sharing and uh, practicing so to you know to, before we take it up you know to the questions session question and answer session today uh, i request everybody to put your videos on for a while so that we can take a screenshot and uh, keep it as our memory for satyam yoga conclave introductory session of third edition the head heart and uh the his heart and hands yeah so is put your videos on and if possible change your uh, uh change your display name also so that this will be a memory so if we have uh, names such as iphone and uh, some other names which we cannot relate to people it will be bad memory just give me few seconds keep your videos on i'm taking the screenshots i think you will need to take two screenshots because uh, every all the pictures won't come in one screen yes one thing beautiful beautiful i think this is really very nice and uh, you see a confluence of like minded people is something which is the need of the times we there are people and if we are like strands working individually we will be weak but when we come together then each strand together becomes a very thick rope a rope so strong that even the elephant can't break it that is the strength of coming together ha huh, we do not have to do uh, you know we are not uh, fused from head to toe with each other but we are together in the spirit in the thoughts in actions and together we should take ourselves and society to a better future we have come to life and we have received lots of gifts before we close our eyes and depart from planet earth we need to do something by which the coming generations can remember that yes we had forefathers who gave us something which was unique and we are in that moment in time where we can make a difference and all of us have been through the covid pandemic we know the difficulties and the principles of yoga stood the test of the pandemic and that is what we have to do how can we take ourselves better and better and better not just on a superficial level but keep on deepening and deepening and deepening and 
every individual is divine. There is divinity in each and every one of us. Let us discover that divinity. Let us manifest that divinity and let us make the entire Vasundhara Sujalam Sufalam. That should be the Sankalpa. Individual and cosmic. So, with this, we can conclude. You have taken your uh, screenshots, uh, Chitra. You are muted. Yeah. Yes, Swamiji, I took the screenshots. Uh, uh, so I'm sorry I didn't mention this. I am seeing this in the uh, messages just now. Uh, respected Dr. Lalita Namjoji uh, recently awarded the Yogaratna Puraskar. It's a wonderful thing. And so, we all are waiting for you, ma'am, to listen to you. Therefore, no, we are really uh, very lucky to have such eminent scholars. And you know, these are not people who are just intellectual scholars. But if you look into their lives, you will see that the principles are actually being lived over there. So, look forward for a very nice and enlightening time in the coming days. With this, conclude. Uh, one second. Uh, again, I wanted to say something. Uh, Dr. Agarji sir also like that. They, uh, they are really a great sadhak and they have experienced a lot of knowledgeable person with uh, really uh, yogi-ness, what you can say in uh, short. So we are very grateful uh, having them as our teachers and studying in a yoga first semester from Hungary Nikramanda. And both of them, uh, they teach us. Thanks a lot for yes. this that, Yes, that is certainly true. And uh, the whole idea is that such gems have to be brought together so that their luster helps all of us. With this satsankal, with this thought, let us disperse for the moment. And in the evening, 7.30 India time, we will be gathering once again for a discussion on Karma Yoga. And uh, also, yes, many people have requested and I have been thinking quite a bit on that. Uh, I used to have a short retreat, weekend retreat at some appropriate place where all what we have spoken about, we can actually live the concepts of karma yoga, concepts of bhakti yoga. We can actually live and practice that. So that is also something which many people had requested and uh, I am uh, seriously contemplating about how to do it. And before our conclave is over, I will uh, share with you details of that. Let us conclude. Please Maybe sit. people can give their suggestions about the location and other things uh, later in the, in the next sessions. In the yes. chat window. Yes. Please sit in a comfortable meditative posture with your hands on your knees in Jnana or Chin Mudra. Head, neck, shoulders, back, all in a straight line. Eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Bring your awareness to your eyebrow center and maintaining your awareness over here, recall the image you had chosen in the beginning of the session. Keeping ourselves connected to this experience, we shall chant the mantra Om followed by Shanti Pat. Take a deep breath in. Oh,
असतो मद्गम तमसो मोतिर्गम मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय शांतिर्भवतूर्ण मंगल लोका समस्ता सुखिनो त्र्यंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धनम पुष्टिवर्धन बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओ शांति 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 प्रणाम मुद्रा माता पिता बंधु सखा विद्या द्रविणम मम देव देव हरि 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 ओ जेंटली द क्लोज्ड आईज एक्सपीरियंस रेडिएटिंग फ्रॉम द पाम्स टू योर आईज टू द ब्रेन टू द होल बॉडी जेंटली मूव द पाम्स अवे Open your eyes. Hari Om. That's it. Namo Narayan.